Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are continuing to look at the CCC20 bullet final between Stockfish and Torch. And um, well this was a game that uh, Stockfish won again um, but I enjoyed it very much. It's one of those games with lots and lots of different phases and um, you know, uh, there's uh, there's one side that's attacking, but the attack doesn't succeed, and then you transpose into an end game, and uh, yeah, you just get to display your skills in all the different phases. And uh, well, those I always find those to be the nicest games uh, that uh, that engines play. So let's have a look how this one went. Stockfish was white, and uh, the new engine Torch was black. So it was a French defence, a Rubinstein. And uh, actually, I think that this is uh, something that I've seen John Spielman play with the bishop on uh, on d6 in this way. And uh, in principle, Black's idea normally would be to play something like bishop d7, queen e7, and castle queen side. Um, actually, the engines uh, end up playing end up playing it uh, just a little bit different there. So after queen e2, they play a6, and then afterwards they're going to look for uh, for c5, and a6 is played to um, uh, yeah, stop any check happening basically after you go c5. So bishop d2 was played by uh, Stockfish here. Um, actually in uh, my engine games, this is Stockfish against Dragon, um, h4 was played and uh, quite nice idea actually. So uh, after b5 we just play h5 and after castles we go h6, just nail that one in there and then afterwards castles here and um, yeah, Stockfish was just playing uh, basically a normal positional game, normal French but with the pawn on h6 and that yeah as always you know that actually worked quite well and was actually quite awkward for Black. But I like Stockfish's plan at the CCC uh, very much actually just uh, bishop d2 is what I was always doing uh, when I got these positions as white, queen e2, bishop d2, quick castle and then uh, hope for some sort of attack somewhere. So uh, c5 was played, takes takes, and then castles. Queen c7, king b1, pretty standard move from uh, from white, you always do that quickly. Just uh, avoid any possible checks there, that always helps tactically, and also protect that pawn on a2, and then just wait to see how black's going to uh, develop. Um, yeah, I mean black has to decide where to put the king. I mean, um, uh, Stockfish in my games was playing uh, bishop d7, knight e5 bishop c6 and then going castle queen side not very comfortable you get hit with uh, with bishop f4 but was somehow managing to sort of make it work but what torch did was quite uh, quite decent played uh, b5 simply bishop c3 so uh, you know white sort of uh, anticipating with glee uh, <laughs> the black casting on the king side so actually what torch does torch is really going to try and uh, well either castle queen side or keep the king in the centre. Yeah, the king isn't super safe, but it also isn't, uh, you know, th there's nothing terrible happening yet, and black's got quite a few pieces that can uh, cover the squares around the centre. So, yeah, you know, it's risky, but it's uh, it's possible. So, rookie one played by, uh, by Stockfish, and here um, there's a kind of a fundamental decision. Um, now, what Stockfish was looking for, actually, in, uh, in the games was uh, to go castle queen side. And uh, this is quite interesting. We go a4, undermine this queenside pawn structure, takes bishop a6, and um, a3, and then b4. And uh, yeah, actually, this was uh, Komodo against uh, Komodo Dragon against um, uh, against Stockfish. And uh, yeah, it's one of those things when uh, you often see it that uh, that engines see, they sort of seem to follow uh, like a, a fixed track. You know, you're looking at the position, you're thinking, "Wow, this is unbelievably complicated." And all the engines see is one path, really. It's it's always really funny. But um, here we were. I was getting just getting lots of games that uh, you know that were basically going until about move twenty six here. King a two, bishop takes f two. We take that one. Takes takes. Rook f one. Bishop e three. King a three. And uh, well, I was sort of expecting this to be quite difficult for Black because um, uh, you know we're just going to try and exchange off uh, both pair of rooks, and then we're going to have you know both these pass pawns on the queen side and well these pawns are a little bit damaged so you know it's, normally that gives the knights you know possibilities to, uh, to create some holes and then establish them uh, itself on them but yeah I mean this was uh, how it went uh, in the games king c7 uh, queen d3 
Bishop c1 check, queen a7. This was uh, um, knight b3, queen a6. And uh, yeah, you know, much to my surprise, uh, Stockfish uh, with black swapping off the uh, the piece here. And Stockfish managed to uh, to hold this uh, simply, just um, you know, moving these uh, these pawns forward, um, attacking some uh, some kingside pawns and harassing these pawns as they advanced. I think that this would be quite tough to hold in a human game, to be honest. Um, I think I could lose this quite <laughs> quite quickly, to be honest. But uh, Stockfish held it somehow. But um, well, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that uh, you know, even if this castle's line is doing okay, you know, um, in the engine uh, games, I think this is still quite tricky for uh, for Black here. I actually like what Torch did uh, an awful lot, just to go rook d8 here. So um, just preparing to get that rook uh, active, and uh, yeah, just delaying kingside castling until. Uh, the very last moment, um, a3 played by um, uh, by by Stockfish just to uh, to stop Black from playing b4, and really asking Black, well, you know, what are you going to do? Um, uh, go on, Castle Castle Kingside, go on, go on. But Rook d5 was played by uh, by Torch, and this is uh, quite a nice move, quite common in the, in these sort of lines of the French. Um, I've played them also a number of times, and uh, you know the rook sort of acts as a sweeper, really. So um, stopping a knight from coming into g5, and um, uh, yeah, you know, pr preparing some stuff like uh, you know maybe doubling on the d file or whatever, some pressure, some counter pressure against White's position. <coughs> uh, and now it gets interesting. Uh, Stockfish played the move h4, and this is quite uh, quite neat, really. Um, you know, just um, in one way, you know, um, White's just uh, preparing knight g5 here, so uh, negating the uh, the defensive influence of that rook on d5. So um, Torch followed up with queen b6. Also quite interesting. I mean, basically, you know, if um, if White goes uh, knight g5 here, then the queen's already covering the e6 square, so we're not going to have sacrifices like this. Uh, and in actual fact, what the engines want to do is just to take and play bishop d4. You know, so uh, block off this pressure, and then maybe black will be able to think about castling kingside. Still a little bit dangerous, but, um, you know, should be uh, just about okay. But uh, Stockfish played a great move here, and, uh, you know, it's just a really, really nice move here. And uh, that was to play the move h5. So just giving away that pawn. Um, I mean... Black's got to be a little bit careful here because, um, you know, h6 is uh, is threatened. So, uh, you know, we're going to undermine uh, the knight on f6. So you've got to be a little bit careful about that. But if you take on h5, well, we're just going knight e5. And after knight f6, we're going f4. And then we're going uh, f5, you know. And uh, and all of a sudden, just got a couple of tempi there. Um, we've got some pressure against the, uh, um, against the e6 and f7 pawns brewing. And, of course... If black does castle kingside, we've now got the h file open, which is also uh, very nice. So, yeah, this is just um, this is very very dangerous for um, uh, for black. Not really what black wants. Um, if you take with a rook on h5, we do something similar. I mean, we go knight e5, and now we've managed to well really isolate this rook from the rest of the board. Um, so uh, again, we're just threatening f4, g4, g5, and we'll do it with uh, with tempo as well. So, yeah tricky decision for um for for black here really um what torch did was quite interesting just played the move b4 um takes um bishop b4 and we're just going to try and swap off this uh, uh these dark squared bishop and then swapping off that dark squared bishop that, that's going to remove some pressure against the king's side and maybe we can get our our kings uh, safe and uh, again, this is one of those funny periods where, you know, I'm just seeing an, uh, an astonishingly complicated position and the engines are just saying, and now it's just forced, you know, for the next uh, seven or eight moves. There's only one good move. I mean, that's totally clear. Um, you know, so again, very, very weird, you know, but it's, uh, it's one of those effects that you notice when uh, analysing with engines uh, a lot. Um, so White took on b4 and then played the move h6 just, uh, well, I mean, really basically trying to ruin Black's king side. But um, uh, Torch went uh, castles, and um, yeah, I mean, the idea is, uh, okay, after HG, that's not fantastic, but there's no immediate mate. And I mean, actually, White doesn't want to take on G7. What you want to try and do, you want to get your queen on the G file and connect up with that pawn against uh, G7. So knight E5 was played by uh, Stockfish, and, well, you're cutting off uh, this defense of the rook, so you're going to be able to... Uh, 
to get like this and uh, start attacking the king. But actually, uh, the reason I was so impressed with Torch's defence was that rook a5 happens and uh, yeah, I mean, this rook had a defensive purpose on the king's side. It's also got an attacking purpose on the queen's side. So, uh, you know, <coughs> well, give black a little bit of time. We're going to have rook b8, some bishop move somewhere, and uh, and queen a4. And, uh, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden white's in big trouble. But, um, yeah, this was pretty impressive, really, the way that uh, Stockfish defended. Um, yeah, um, I, if I uh, defended in this way, this calmly, I'd be very impressed with myself. So queen e3 uh, played, just aiming for uh, for g5. And after queen a4, threatening mate on uh, a1, the move c4. And this move is very nice because uh, obviously it, it gives the uh, the white king uh, c2. And, uh, you know, there is the possibility of escaping this way. Um, but what it also does, it, um, it takes control of the d5 square. So this knight is never going to be able to... Uh, you know to contribute anything to the attack and uh, yeah I mean it, it just turns out that um, uh, black's got plenty of checks but white can just sort of shimmy around so uh, yeah I get this did again surprise me because uh, yeah it's yeah these sort of things are always always tricky to uh, to assess properly as you know as a human player and uh, well this wasn't any different because check check the king went to d2 queen b4 check and then very surprising I mean I was just thinking well we've got to start running haven't we but the engine just goes back with uh, with c1 and the idea is if you check i just come here and if you go rook a2 i just go rook b1 and defend the b2 pawn and uh, black goes rook b8 and then queen g5 happens and uh, well now it's white's turn to attack um, obviously you can give some checks but the king can always run away uh, we're threatening queen takes g7 mate and after takes we take on g7 and we're threatening bishop takes h7, followed by uh, g8 or rook h1, whatever you fancy. Um, and the interesting thing there is that if you go f5, well, there's a couple of possibilities there. Um, um, actually, white's playing to swap the queens, whatever. Uh, queen d2 is uh, is one idea. And uh, just swap off the, uh, the queens and leave black with um, uh, some weaknesses. So uh, takes takes, knight f6, f3. And you've got to try and get this rook back into play. Rook a5, we go b4. Rook a2, check bishop c2. King takes g7, knight d3. And, you know, white's got a lovely pawn structure past uh, c pawn. Weak e6 pawn to, uh, to attack. Knight c5 coming in. Can easily swap off that rook or maybe even trap it with king c3 to b3. It's just a very difficult position for black. And, uh, yeah, Komodo was definitely not, uh, definitely not holding this. So, um, yeah, I mean, just uh, quite amazing, really. Yeah? Just uh, the idea of uh, getting checked all over the place and then heading back to the queen side. Quite, yeah, quite unusual, quite unusual. And, uh, yeah, not at all what, uh, what I would expect there. So rook b8 was, uh, was played. And now uh, maybe a slight divergence between uh, the stockfish of uh, uh, the CCC and, uh, and my stockfish. This was the, the big 94 core machine, but it's still not half as big as what uh, chess.com have got, but I'm running it at a slightly longer time control. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know, uh, but I, I imagine that the, uh, the chess.com one is seeing more, but um, my engines really wanted to play the move queen d4. Um, uh, just, um, you know, defend uh, the queen side in this way, defend the b2 pawn. And uh, after g takes h6, then f3. And uh, yeah, I mean, just just basically try and uh, and, and hold it this way. And that, again, this was uh, this was uh, rather bizarre because uh, you know we we now the next twenty five moves are just uh, the same in uh, in a whole series of games. It's it's quite bizarre. The engines obviously decided that um, uh, this was a, a key idea, but I, I find it hard to sort of uh, comment on why all of these moves were absolutely necessary. So bishop b one, rook b seven rook e3 i'll just show you the the position that they were ending up with all the time because it was quite interesting all sorts of unbelievable tactics here and uh, things that you're not you know 100 percent sure why would they hold but this was the ending that they were ending up with knight d5 hitting rook and also uh, attacking the knight there and then takes takes and knight f5 and um well black's got you know rook and two pawns for the um uh for the the um the knight and bishop but of course um yeah uh yeah all these pawns are split and in principle then easy targets for um for white's two pieces and after uh, king f8 
we just go b3 and king b2 get out of that pin and then start you know reeling in the pawns and uh, yeah, you're never sure about these sometimes they can turn out to be drawn sometimes not but um, uh, the engines were scoring a lot of wins as white in this position um, actually I mean did, did I even see a draw um, I don't think so stockfish was uh, was winning loads and loads against dragon um, yeah yeah actually the queen d4 was basically a stockfish uh, a stockfish special for uh, for me dragon didn't play it at all but uh, really scoring a lot of wins there so yeah i mean you know general evidence would seem to uh, indicate that queen d4 was maybe uh, um, a little bit stronger there because queen g5 um the engines were actually drawing uh, some of these um as you'll see but uh, again still very very difficult for black so um <coughs> pardon me this uh, threat here queen g7 of course is very dangerous so knight e8, and now this is a very nice switchback, queen d2. So we've, um, we sort of, uh, you know, moved the black knight uh, back to e8, a little bit passive, and now we're just trying to uh, to exchange off the uh, the queens there. And uh, yeah, again, quite unusual there, eh? quite unusual. Um, if rook a1, we go bishop b1, and uh, um, just a little bit hard for black to, to try and keep the queens on. If queen a4, we go queen d3 attacking um there f5 we go f3 and yeah it's just kind of hard to get at the white king and uh, you know we've always got the possibility of escaping and there's all these weaknesses you know all these uh, these weak pawns although you know black's got quite a bit of uh, looks like black's got quite a bit of attacking potential you know it's it's quite hard to get out you know uh, this was a game uh, dragon against stockfish takes takes and dragon did it very nicely queen c3 we're just uh, attacking this one keeping the knight on e8 there a5 we go b3 <laughs> uncovering an attack here rook a3 bishop c2 a4 queen e5 attacking the rook stepping out of that one yeah b takes a4 queen c4 queen e6 just in time takes takes just uh, with all these things somehow yeah you know the engines always seem to be just in time you know to me as a human uh, player i'd be thinking all the time well i don't know whether this is going to be good for me or whether I'm just losing. But for the engines, it's just clear, you know, you can step out of the attacks always just in time and black remains under pressure. And uh, yeah, dragon managed to beat Stockfish in uh, in this one. King f7, rook a6, holding the pool. We can always defend uh, the bishop on, on c2 with rook d2 if uh, rook a2 is played. White's a pawn up, bishop against knight, past a pawn. Yeah, you know, chances are that this is going to be winning for uh, for white. So, yeah, very, very complicated positions, I have to say. Um, and, um, I mean, uh, in this position, Torch played bishop g2, you know, grabbing a pawn. And actually, Stockfish goes to uh, to exchange off queen. So, actually, uh, um, we're, you know, Stockfish has transposed into an endgame here where it's actually a pawn down. The only problem for black is that the pieces are, you know, spread all over the place. Um, you know, the knight's a bit rubbish on the eight. The bishop's vulnerable on g2. These rooks were great when they were attacking, but um, yeah, with just uh, without the queens on the board, they're they're kind of um, offside. And uh, well, yeah, um, White's also got just a very nice pass C pawn, and uh, very important in the ending as well. The king's there to support it, so you know the king will come here. We'll start getting B4, C5. This A6 pawn is weak. Somehow the you know the potential for White in uh, in in the end game is is very very high. Um, so despite being a pawn down the engines are still assessing it as a clear advantage um, yeah you know again I always try and think of myself you know how what would I would I be able to uh, assess that I think I'd, I think I've got good compensation here you know thinking all the blacks pieces are quite um, are quite uh, awkward you know but uh, yeah you know the engines are saying yeah you know clearly winning for white which is obviously quite difficult to assess so f3 played which is um, a little bit awkward this bishop is rather cut off and we're even threatening stuff like knight c6 so um black played f6 knight c6 black takes the opportunity to um to swap off the uh, the rooks there um but um yeah i mean we still got um, a little bit of a problem there for um uh, for black so rook b7 was uh, was played and um now a few different ideas but um uh, stockfish played knight d8 rook e7 and then bishop e4 so we're still keeping this bishop um out of um out of uh, play there uh, obviously if you go f5 i can uh, just play to c6 or something like that 
Um, so that's really, uh, really nice. And uh, yeah, still a little bit worrying for black. And after G takes H6, um, white has the opportunity to take on, um, on, uh, on E6 here. Rook takes E6 and now Rook G1. The Rook's being dragged to E6, so it can no longer defend uh, from G7. And we're going to take this one off. Now, of course, you know, again, you know, black is still a pawn up here. Only if you look at the um, at the basic contours of the position, um, obviously, we've got bishop versus knight, which is quite important because there are pawns on both sides of the board. In principle, this bishop will be able to stop a past black past h pawn, you know, and also support the advance of the uh, of the c pawn. So this is definitely the minor piece you want to have. And of course, you know, all of these black uh, pawns are completely split. So there's not going to be a lot of power going forwards. I mean, this H pawn is not going to share a combined rook and bishop from uh, from white. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, still, you know, this is still quite difficult. But the engines were managing to um, achieve some draws in this position, but uh, required some, some very good play there. So king f8, rook takes g2. And now um, a5 played just to uh, to hold this um, these pawns back and stop this this um, this a pawn being uh, fixed onto a light square where it's you know easy to attack. Rook h2 played, um, and here I think this was uh, the crucial moment. Um, and uh, actually, what um, the engines wanted was something quite nice. I, I have to say, um, it was this move um, f5. So just giving away this pawn, but it's a pretty useless pawn, the f-pawn, um, you know, because, yeah, it's never going to become passed, and, uh, yeah, what's it doing? So what you actually do there, you get, manage to get the um, the bishop out of the way, and you manage to get the rook lovely and active. So it's attacking the pawn in h3, and also cutting off the white king there. Um, so what is white going to do? Um, something like bishop g4, we go knight f6, you know, we're just going to try and... Uh, and uh, head for some sort of, um, of of rook ending there. For example, here I go a4, which is quite nice, just uh, tying down the um, uh, the pawn. I go rook e2 check, and I go h5. Yeah, you know, again the engines are really doing a nice job here. You can't go to uh, to b4 because of rook b3. Um, and after king d4, we go rook b3. And somehow, you know, with this uh, incredible uh, little play here, you know, black's managed to um, <coughs> break up these, uh, these you know, potential two past uh, queenside pawns and also get the h pawn active and get the knight active as well. Still tricky for, uh, for black, but uh, the engines were drawing this. You know, it's uh, whether dragon was black or stockfish was black, they were managing to draw this. So, um, yeah, I mean, f5 was definitely a good, uh, a good idea. Another idea for white is to play rook h3. <coughs> Pardon me, just to, um, to defend this, uh, this pawn. But we go knight f6, b3, h5. And, you know, the, the king's going to get active. This rook's great. This rook's a bit passive. You know, this, this is working out all right for, uh, for black. Bishop d3, king f7, king d2, rook e8, rook h2. Managed to evict the rook now, but now the rook's going to come back. Uh, king e3, king e7, bishop f5, rook b8 attacking the pawn, bishop c2, king d6. You know, black's not greater. I mean, uh, these pawns are all weak. Would be easy to go wrong. Uh, I certainly wouldn't uh, feel 100% confident against uh, Magnus or anyone like that. But um, black's active, you know, and, and fighting, and uh, and white's um, a queenside majority, which is what he really wants to get going, is not at all active. I mean, you know, you could imagine a, a king coming in here and uh, you know breaking things up with a4, and uh, and suddenly white's uh, uh, white's whole queenside structure is being blown apart. So this move f5, just giving away a useless pawn really to uh, to get the uh, the rook super active and um, you know whilst uh, whilst the white pieces are passive dealing with the immediate activity to get your knight in to get your uh, h pawn to a safe square get your king a bit active you know that was uh, that was kind of what um, what black should be doing um, what um, uh, torch did was play knight d6 bishop d5 rook e5 um, but this was um, this is I don't know, this is less impressive really. I mean, uh, the problem is is that um, uh, what Torch is not actually managing to do is to uh, to keep the um, uh, the white king passive. So after f4, he played rook e1. Um, why are you going f4 actually? Because that pawn was defended. But the point is that um, actually Stockfish is not totally bothered about um, whether this f pawn is being lost. The key thing is that the bishop is able to deal with 
you know, all of the uh, diagonal and able to stop any past H pawn coming. You know, you want the bishop to show its quality over the knight by being able to both support the C pawn and hold back past pawns. Um, so rook h6 played, rook h3, just, uh, yeah, covering this, we're, we're looking to go over to a3 to attack the a pawn. We're also making sure that the king doesn't get checked when it comes to the third rank. Rook e2, king c3, king g6, rook d3. And uh, we're starting to get ready now to play the move c5. And uh, and uh, when we go c5, the knight will have to move, and then that'll give us uh, a bit of an entry spot there for the king as well, as well as just being able to push the pawn. So knight e4, king f2, knight f2, rook b3. And now again, you know, torch sets up a cunning tactic, but it just falls a little short. So a4, rook b5, rook check, and now king e3. And, uh, well, it looks like, uh, you know, this is uh, getting on the way to decisive, really. Uh, we're going to start thinking about, uh, you know, moving this pawn forwards. But uh, Torch has got a nice little tactic here. Rook takes b2. And after rook takes b2, we get knight d1 check, forking the king and rook. Um, unfortunately, king d4, knight b2, c5. This pawn is a runner. This bishop, again, you know, doing a great job here, stopping the king from... Uh, from moving back and moving through g7 f8 is too slow now uh, the engine's uh, torch again finds uh, a very cunning way to uh, to do this c7 but of course we're going to threaten uh, king uh, uh, king c5 and chase away the knight but there is a nice little tactic here because uh, we can just go knight c8 in this position and uh, when uh, white goes bishop c8 we go a2 bishop f5 check hoping for king f5 uh, c8 queen um, but king goes to g7 and c8 queen a1 queen check and uh, yeah I mean this was what I was really talking about about all these phases of the game you know because in the opening we had uh, um, uh, white sort of attacking you know h4 h5 we've had black attacking uh, then we've gone into uh, an end game and then the you know the end game has gone through uh, several different phases and now we've ended up in this queen and bishop versus queen position um, the big problem really I mean obviously what you'd the only thing that you desire is for this pawn to be an h pawn when it would be the wrong colored bishop and that would give all sorts of possibilities but in actual fact the key point is that white can just um, um, offer the exchange of queens at any moment and of course the black king here is rather weak it's not um, uh, yeah it's got no cover at all so you know you just have to cover the checks black runs out of checks and then white starts attacking the black king you know and uh, there's nothing you can do. I mean, the um, the engines were winning uh, all of these games. Um, yeah, again, you know, in a Cuban game, it would be a um, a little, you know, uh, maybe a, a blitz finish would be a little bit of a nightmare avoiding all the checks. But uh, for the engines, it's not a problem. Queen e8, bishop e4, queen e7, queen a5, and uh, well, actually, this move very nice, covering all the checks. And uh, well, you're just threatening something like um, you know, queen f5, for example, just hitting. Uh, um, hitting h7 so actually torch um, well I mean the engines are saying minus 250 yeah? they're, they're just saying it's a total loss I think uh, Stockfish at some stage was saying mate in 34 on uh, on my uh, machine so uh, you know they're just um, just trying to survive basically keep the game going as long as possible but uh, there's no way to uh, to do it f5 giving away another pawn and uh, well the game did not last long after this so there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm afraid, Torch fans, it's another Stockfish win, but I thought it was a very fine game from both sides, actually. You know, and uh, um, I like very much, you know, the plan that uh, Stockfish played just out of the uh, opening against this Rubinstein French, always doing it. Queen e2, bishop d2, castles, followed by king b1, and then we have a look what we do. Um, I liked also very much this uh, plan, rook d8, um, and then rook d5 afterwards, which uh, I've played a number of times. I always like it, you know, sweep a rook and, uh, um, you know, really able to both uh, defend and attack and uh, keeping the king, you know, incredibly flexibly in the centre, not giving white that early attack. But this idea was lovely. I mean, just uh, giving away the pawn like that and just basically saying, well, you know, if you leave it, I'm playing h6. And if you take it, then when you castle kingside, I'll have an open h file. I mean, it's very, uh, you know, very nice. And it's worth spending two tempi for that. You know, it's really, uh, yeah, really, really very impressive there. But I mean, this uh, this thing, you know, I was playing through the game and suddenly you see this rook coming to a5 and, uh, you know, you're starting to see, you know, the, the you know a huge black attack here. You know, really, uh, 
I was really impressed. But yeah, I mean, just this, uh, the way the engine handles it, you know, this uh, little shimmy with the king and then heading back to the queen side, that's, you know, very, very unusual. And, uh, well, I mean, I just found the ending uh, fascinating, really, you know, that you can uh, just head for an end game there, you know, a pawn down, but, you know, bad pieces. Um, and just this general, you know, the, the general, uh, um, uh, yeah, end game, um, uh, end game material balance there, that bishop versus knight, we've got pawns on both sides, you know, the bishop's going to be way better, good queen side structure, just weak pawns to attack everywhere. And that doesn't just add up to a slight white advantage, it adds up to a decisive advantage. You know, it's, uh, yeah, very interesting. And um, yeah, it's, and it's something that, you know, as a human player, you could sort of guess it, but uh, somehow I think you need to see a number of examples like this in engine games before you're really confident just calling it in your own games, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, I was very, very, very impressed by that game. And also, yeah, you know, the finish was, uh, was very nice as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like the video, if you're enjoying these torch videos, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books there somewhere or there or there maybe. Uh, <laughs> the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which is all about uh, engine games and re-engineering the chess classics, which is all about analyzing human games like I did with the Janowski series before this one. Um, with engines and just finding you know amazing things really it's uh, um, both I think really good books especially re-engineering the chess classics uh, just the most recent one uh, you know really really proud of that one and uh, otherwise you know thanks very much for watching great to have uh, viewers you know sort of being part of the channel and um, yeah hope to see you at the next video thanks for watching